Hello everybody, it's Jen Scrappina Creations. I'm going to be making two cards today using the Two Cool stamp set by Pink and Main. At the time of posting this video, Pink and Main had these on clearance, the stamp set you can purchase for $9, and the Stamp and Die bundle is on sale for $15, so I will leave the link below in case you're interested. I thought this was a really cute stamp set for young boys or for masculine cards or really for anyone because, you know, bears can be for anyone. So I received the Stamp and Die bundle when I was at the Crop and Create crop in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. And so I thought it would be fun to share some projects with you. So I've already gone ahead and jumped into the coloring. I am going to color each of the bears in a different color combination of browns. I thought that would give you a sense of how you could color them up a little bit differently if you wanted them to look different or you could pick your favorite color combination and go with that. So for the first one, my darkest color is the E23. My darkest midtone is the E35. My lightest midtone, the E53 and then the E51. So for the coloring, I just went ahead in with my lightest marker and mapped it where I wanted my shadows to be. Then I went in with the darkest and just going through those markers from darkest to lightest. So I will finish off with the E51 here and you get a nice blend with the four color combination but you could also do this very easily with a three color combination. So this little guy is holding his backpack. I thought he'd be pretty cute for a congratulations card for the end of the school year. I'm moving on now to this little bear holding an ice cream cone and I'm going to use a little bit darker shades here. So you can see me, I'm just kind of pausing as I'm looking at where I want my darkest shadows to be. I realized there that he had little shorts on, so I wanted to make sure I didn't color those up like his body. So for this color combination, I'm using E29, E27, E25, and E23. This is one of my favorite brown color combinations. It's a great color for dark brown hair. It's great for chocolate if you're coloring an image that has anything to do with chocolate. So if you're looking for a good brown combination, I would definitely recommend this one. I think this is the first kind of color set of darker browns that I purchased in Copics. So same with the first bear. I'm just going in, mapping out with my lightest color, and then going through from darkest to lightest. Now, I did skip the little tummy and the muzzle of the bear on the first one because I wasn't quite sure what color I wanted to color that, but I went ahead and decided to do his tummy and muzzle in the same color as the second bear holding the ice cream cone. So the first one is going to have a lighter body and then darker accents and will match the second bear quite nicely, which I end up putting them on the same card. So that goes well that they have some similar colors. I wanted to go ahead and actually darken up his muzzle and belly just a little bit more so I went through a second time with that and you can see that second layer darkened it up quite nicely. For the third bear on the skateboard I'm going to use an even darker color combination. I'm using E49 as my darkest, E79 as my darkest midtone, and E77 as my lightest midtone and then the marker that I'm using right now as my lightest color is the E74. Again, this is kind of my go-to coloring style now where I just map out those lightest, well, I map out the darkest shadows with my lightest marker and then go ahead in from darkest to lightest. And I find that this way you get a really great blend and it also saves a bit on your ink as opposed to going from lightest to darkest and then back down from darkest to lightest. But it's definitely up to you and you can try out both ways and figure out what way you prefer and what gives you the best blend. 
So I'm coloring on some Spectrum Noir Premium cardstock, which I have linked below with all the other products that I will use in this video. And this is the paper that I started with when I first started coloring using Spectrum Noir markers, and I've just kind of stuck with it um, because I'm used to it and because it's easily accessible here in Canada. So once I got the body of our third bear done, I decided to go back and color the muzzle of our little bear here in the middle using that darkest color combination. I was trying to figure out how exactly his face was <laughs> comprised just because I wasn't sure if the sides there were little blush areas on his cheeks. I do end up coming back and coloring in those sides the same darker uh, of his body just because I thought it looked a little bit funny. But I've left it for now and I've moved on to the coloring for the third bear, his little muzzle and tummy. And for that I'm using E23, E35, E53 and E51. So this will be a nice kind of mid-tone color for his body and I like how the dark color of his body contrast so nicely with that kind of honey color. For their noses, I'm just going to color those in using the C9 marker, and then I'm going to move on here to the sunglasses. So I'm going to go ahead and color those using my C markers. I'm just using my C1 right now to lay down some color. Now for this first bear, I was trying to do some kind of, um, what's the word, like accent lines in his sunglasses. I didn't quite like how this turned out so I did it a bit differently for the second and third bear and then I went back and fixed this up off camera. But I was trying to go with shading in terms of how it was drawn where the lightest spots were looking to the left hand side of the sunglasses. I'm coming back in with my darkest markers and just darkening those up a little went ahead and colored the other two pairs of sunglasses and now I'm going to work on the shorts for our little ice cream cone bear here. So I'm using some of my B markers, the B99 is my darkest, the B97 and the B95 as my two midtones, and then B91 as my lightest color here. So I'm just going to color this up really quickly and I am going to do this blue shade on the other bears as well. So I'm going to color the skateboarding bears shirt in the same color combination and his little skateboard as well as the backpack and the stripes on our first little bear. So again just going in with my lightest marker here figuring out where I want those darkest shadows to be which w on this bear would be under his neck and then under his arms and to the side of his bodies where there would be a shadow. So just going ahead in with the B99, the B97 and then blending that out with the B95. So his highlight is going to be in the middle of his t-shirt and you can see how nicely this color family blends together. So once I get him finished up, I'll move over to that first bear. Just wanted to darken up his shoulders just a little bit before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and color this like it's a dem denim backpack. And I just went ahead and used my lightest marker all over the entire backpack image there just to saturate the paper. I was feeling pretty confident in where I wanted to put my shadows for the backpack and because it's a little bit smaller of a space I didn't want to chance getting some bleeding so I decided to just go right in after laying down that first layer of color. So once I get the backpack done I'm going to do the stripes on this bear shirt in the blue color as well. I'm going to leave out the darkest marker for the stripes just because I thought that putting all of those colors in just might be a little bit too much for the tiny area that the stripes take up. So started out with the B97, coming in now with the B95, and then I will blend that out with the 
B91, I think. So I think I just used actually the three colors, but if you spotted a fourth in there, let me know. So then I decided to color the skateboard in the same blue color. I didn't want to do black. I thought this would tie in the blue nicely. And now I've jumped into my yellows for the shirt on our little bear here and then for the star on our third bear. So the color combination I'm using is Y38, Y15, Y13, and Y11. So I'm just giving him some shading around the sides by his arms and underneath his neck and where the strap of his little backpack is would also cast a shadow. Once I go through all the colors for the shirt, I'll move over to the little star here and I'm just touching my tip of my marker very lightly and he's also got what looks like a little star tattoo on his cheek which is absolutely adorable. I'm going to go ahead and do the stripes on our middle bear here in the yellow as well. I just didn't want to bring in too many different colors so I was trying to maintain some consistency throughout all three of the bears. Didn't quite know what color I wanted to color this little guy's shirt so I decided on some olivey greens. So I'm going to be using YG99, YG97, YG95, and YG93 to color up his shirt. And I do like the way this olive green color looks with both the blue color and the yellow and then the neutral brown of the bear just really allows those colors to pop while keeping everything sort of in a masculine color palette. So once I get the t-shirt done, we'll move on to the ice cream cone. I'm just doing a two color blend with E53 and E51. I'm gonna have him eating some vanilla ice cream. I'm just using C3, C1 and blended that out with my colorless blender. For the cheeks, I decided to do R22 and R20. I felt like it was a little too pink, so off camera I am going to go back and use the uh, E51 over that just to dull them back a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm using the dyes. What I love about pink and main dyes is that they already come cut, so you just simply have to take them off of the paper that they come on and you can go ahead and die cut them on uh, whatever cutting machine you have. So I have the Big Shot. So I've got these die cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jump in to creating card number one. For card number one and two actually, I'm going to use the English Brick Stencil. This is an MFT stencil and I'm just going to use my Vivace makeup brush here which I purchased very inexpensively off Amazon. And I'm going to use my Distress Oxide in Hickory Smoke to get a very light background. So these two cards are very clean and simple. I'm going to go ahead and for the first card I've made the brick background on a portrait piece of cardstock. And for the second one you'll see I did the same thing with landscape. So I wanted it to be more concentrated in that bottom right hand corner and fading out gradually to the rest of the card, just giving a light background to the images. I'm also using the Doodlebug Dragon Tails 6x6 paper for both of the cards. I thought these went perfectly for a masculine touch. And they just coincidentally paired really well with the colors that I chose for uh, our little bears here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up the ice cream cone bear on some fun foam and I went ahead and adhered the bear with the backpack down uh, with some liquid adhesive. I'm going to add the sentiment to the top left corner using my VersaFine Claire ink and I'm just going to stamp that right on to the cardstock. I'm loving this ink. It gives such a crisp image with one stamp. And I'm going to go ahead and pop up these sunglasses over top of the sentiment. And I thought this card would make a great school congratulation uh, end of year card because there is a sentiment that says so proud of you. So we're already moving on to card number two. This is another clean and simple card design, but I thought we would add an interactive element just to bring it up slightly a notch. 
So I'm using the MFT Leaping Slider channels, and then I had a little package there of the slider elements to help me create this slider card, which I thought would be perfect for our little bear on the skateboard. So you can see here's the brick wall stencil using the Distress Oxide in the landscape. You want to make sure you leave that little die cut piece, which I was having a ton of trouble trying to pick up. And you want to make sure that you adhere that down underneath the channel once you have your panel on your cardstock. And I went ahead and popped the panel up on a single layer of foam tape. I'm going to adhere this panel down to my card base now. Both cards are standard cards at four and a quarter by five and a half. And here's where I had a blooper. So I don't know what I was thinking, but clearly I wasn't thinking. And I went ahead and I added some score tape to the slider. And as you can see, I'm just laying it in the slider. And for some reason, I was thinking, yeah, this is going to work. You'll see that I don't realize that I haven't put the connector pieces in until I go to stamp the inside of my card. And I'll show you how you're actually supposed to do this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp the sentiment, Hey Handsome, underneath our little skateboarding bear. And then once I get that stamped out, here's where it falls off. And you see me pause there because I'm like, oh, right, I did not do that at all the way it was supposed to be done. So I stamped happy birthday on the inside and now I'm going to fix my slider. So I'm just going to add a little piece of scrap cardstock underneath my slider channel. Some people will use pennies, but I find it's just as easy to use some cardstock. Sometimes I will cut it in a circle and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere that slider element back down with some score tape, which is really strong tape and should hold up. Then I'm going to add another piece of cardstock to the slider and then I'm going to glue that on to the back of my little bear and I had too much glue coming out. So I'm just going to take a couple pieces of extra cardstock, pick that up, and then I'm going to adhere my bear back down onto the properly put together slider channel now. So definitely you want to do this before you add this to your card base, but it still works if you leave yourself enough room with the foam around the little channel slider. I did want to raise him up just a little bit more. So I peeled him off carefully, got him up a little bit higher, and now you can see that the little skateboarding bear is moving back and forth in the slider channel. So there's a close-up of card number two. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to say welcome to the new subscribers from the Save the Craft a YouTuber hop. If you haven't checked out the hop, I will leave the link below. There's still time to hop around and win a bunch of amazing prizes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Take care. Bye.